Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about pointers. Now what are pointers? Well basically they're variables that store the address of another variable. Now, uh, now why would we do that? Why would we store the address? Well what it allows us to do is to more efficiently access information in memory. Now I can't really show you in this tutorial because this video will be solely on how pointers work, how you can use them to access information or manipulate them and how it works. And in the next tutorial I'll be showing you a uh, dynamic memory allocation in which I can show you how the where the efficiency actually comes into play, uh, which would include when you're done using, this is probably the most important part, is uh, creating a new variable with that pointer and uh, deleting it when you're done using it so it's no longer in memory and it's actually stored in a separate part of your computer uh, from the regular memory that we've always been working with but that's the next tutorial so I don't want to jump the gun but anyway so as I said pointers what they do is they store the address of a variable so uh, let's figure out how to create one so in order to create a pointer all you do is first type out the data type followed by the asterisk symbol then the identifier, which is just the name of the variable that you want to give it. So let's just call it P1. P will stand for pointer. Uh, and that's it. We'll also have to typically initialize them as well, so uh, doing it just like this isn't how you would normally do it. But uh, another thing I would like to point out is if you're creating a list of integers, uh, if you want to make a bunch of pointers, you can't just do it like this. Uh, what happens is these two are actually read as regular integers. You have to actually put the asterisk right before them. And it doesn't have to be right before. If you see in textbooks, sometimes you'll see like spaces between them or something. Something like that. So, oh whoops. Something like that, but I usually put them right before. That's how I learned, so that's what I'm used to doing. But uh, it doesn't have to be right next to it. But now all three of these are pointers. But anyways, let's figure out how to actually access information now. So the first thing I'd like to do is to actually create a regular integer. So num1 will be equal to, and let's um, just give it the number 8. And I'll put a comma, then at, uh, below that I'll throw in my little asterisk and call it p1. And I'll set that equal to, now would it work if I typed in num1 like this? No, we get an error because remember, pointers must... Uh, contain, they have, they have to point to an address in memory. This is not an address, this is a value. This guy right here represents 8. But if we want the, uh, the reference, the address of num1, all we do is put the little ampersand sign in front of it. So now we have the address. So anytime we use the pointer p1, we'll be pointing to the address of num1, which will then, as a result, return 8. So, uh, let's go back up here and let me show you the different outputs that you can get using P1. So if you want to actually retrieve the value 8 using this pointer that's pointing to the reference the, or to the address of num1, what you do is, well, just type out the pointer P1. So what that will do is return uh, returns value of the and uh, how do I how did I word this? Returns the value of the variable the pointer is pointing to. I'm not quite too sure how to word it, but you'll see. So I'll go down here. I'll throw it to C out, and I'll have it say value, something like that. Then I'll type out the pointer p1 and an inline. So if I click save and I con hit Control F5. value 8. So we so this basically this p1 right here is pointing to the address of num1 and it's returning this 8 value. However, you can get other values. Now let me show you. So, uh, first of all, let me actually uh, show you how you can retrieve the address without using a pointer because I don't think I've ever shown that to you for a v variable. So, address of variable uh, this is this should be pretty obvious, even though we've never done this before, um, just outputting it. Uh, but we, we again we still use the reference symbol. 
So if we just typed out reference num1, that would output the address of the variable. So address of variable, and we get that. So, But uh, another mistake that many people often use when they want to retrieve the value that a pointer is pointing to, uh, they might forget to put the asterisk. And there's a big problem with that. So let me actually copy and paste all of this down to the next line so I don't take up too much of your time. And let me throw out just P1 and see what happens if I don't put the asterisk there. We get the same address. Look at that. It's both the same address. So as you can see, if you're not using the asterisk, which is also called the dereference operator, so I guess I should also point that out too, it's called the dereference operator, uh, it will then, instead of returning the value that that address is storing, uh, then or that the value is stored at that address, it actually just returns the address. So I should also go down here and... Uh, put down a technical term that is called the dereference operator and allow me to go down here and type out just p1 returns address of where variable is stored now you might be thinking well what happens if I put an ampersand in front of that p1 Will it give me the same result as the ampersand before the num1? Well, let's see. So if I go C out, uh, address of. Uh, I don't want to type that out yet. I, I really don't. Because it'll be kind of giving it away. So if I throw out an ampersand followed by the P1 instead, followed by the N line, let's see what's returned now this time. Oh, zero zero B one. Wait a minute. This is a different address than these two. Notice how these two are the same, and they will actually usually change every time you run your application. These two will change all the time, uh, but these two will always be the same during runtime, even though they always change every time you run the application. But this one right here is different. Well, what address is this? This is the address of the pointer itself, which is in your memory. And again, that's kind of where dynamic memory allocation comes into play, is because, uh, and again, this will be the next video in which I elaborate on it more, but dynamic memory allocation, what that will be about is to actually store uh, your variables in a separate part of your computer known as the heap. And from there, you actually have control of the life of that variable, meaning you can actually destroy it take it out of memory when you no longer need it instead of waiting till a function ends or something and uh, and you cannot control it it's n you can't control it when it's in regular memory which all of our variables and pointers are in now and that's what we've always been doing was declaring variables in your regular computer memory uh, not in the heap so uh, but that's where dynamic memory allocation will come into play in the next video is well, being able to get rid of it. So this isn't. So uh, so this does have its own value. It's it's in its own section of the computer. Okay. So now that we know that, um, allow me to uh, throw out another comment here. So I thought a reference, and you don't have to call them P one. That's just the typical example. Any kind of textbook or any kind of piece of documentation would show you address of pointer. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, I would actually like to show you a little diagram that I made in Paint again. It's another poorly designed thingamajigger. Uh, excuse me. But let's look at this. Because this, um, this has a little bit of data manipulation in it that uh, will kind of be confusing at first, but it's very important that you understand how the data manipulation works. So let's look at this. So uh, notice how if I type, let's say we create two variables int num1 and int num2 so that one will be equal to 15 and the other will be equal to 45 so let's actually do that let's get rid of all these right here so I'll go int num1 is equal to was that 15 and num2 is equal to 45 then 
let's create two pointers to those variables. So I'll actually go back up. I'll just, nah, I'll separate the pointers. So I go int and I'll type in p1 will be equal to the address of num1. And pointer2 will be equal to the reference of num2. There we go. So I just type all that out and let's click save. And this is how it's pretty much represented in memory. Both pointers, as you can see, have their own addresses in memory. And the variables themselves, num1 and num2, which is 15 and 45, have their own addresses. And basically, the pointers will point to the addresses of these other variables. But as you can see, these other diagrams, things kind of change when you do little things like this. So, uh, um, here, when you access the pointer itself the uh, using the dereference operator, you can actually change the value of whatever variable you are targeting. So let's look at this. So if I were to go, let's uh, p1 equal to p2 with the dereference operators. So here I'll type out, uh, first of all, let me actually print out p1 and p2. So pointer 1, I'll throw out a p1, whoops. And then another C out for pointer 2. Sorry about this. Yeah, this is kind of a difficult concept to grasp. So if you have trouble understanding this, I don't blame you. This, this did take me a little bit to understand. So basically, I went P1 is equal to P2. OK, there we go, using the dereference modifiers. But before I actually print anything, let's just uh, make sure these two guys work. Uh, 15 and 45, there it is. OK, so now what we're going to do is this, set the, set the value basically of P1 equal to P2. So if we do that, uh, as you can see in this little diagram, what it did is it set the value that P1 is pointing to equal to the value that p2 is um, pointing to. So now this address now holds 45 instead of the 15 that it used to, because now it's equal to whatever the value was stored in the address of p2. So let's actually talk about c out, and now let's actually uh, print out both of these. So I'm, I'm actually going to copy and paste these. You know I should be making a function for this. This is bad programming right here. but. This, this is just for diagram purposes. So let's go P1 and P2 again, and let's actually go C out and type out the actual variables as well. So C out num2, there we go. And I'll type out uh, variable 1, or num1, how about that, just num1. So I'll go num1 and uh, whoops and num2. There we go. So that should print everything that I would like it to. So I'll run this and let's see what happens. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, there we go. Um, after setting the value of the variable that this that uh, the pointer one is pointing to equal to the value that's being ah this is uh, I know this is so hard uh, tongue twisters here uh, the value that's being uh, the address that the gosh dang I'm more losing my track of memory um, these are point oh my gosh. These are pointing to an address, and the value at that address was changed. So, oh my goodness, I, I, I think you can uh, bear with me on that one. So difficult. But as you can see, both here, pointer 1 was now changed to 45. So we printed out the value uh, that's being stored at that address. So when we print it, there you go, that's how I wanted to say it. The value that's stored at that address. Uh, but if we actually use the num1, was that changed? Because that's the same address, isn't it? This this is storing the address, the P1, storing is storing the address of num1, as you can see uh, here. P1 is storing the address of num1. So when we printed num1, it's no longer 15. It's, it's now 45. 
So num1 is no longer equal to 15 here. So we really did permanently change it. However, um, let's say we ignore, let's ignore this. Let's say we didn't do this one. So I'm just going to delete all of this here. And let's see what happens if you do this guy right here. Now this is actually something that you wouldn't really do in real life because you're keeping this guy alive uh, when you'll never be able to get back to it. Uh, so this is not something you would really do, but this is just for demonstration purposes only. So don't worry about that. But what happens if you actually set the addresses that these guys are equal to, equal to each other? So basically the address, so these guys are referring to the values that are stored at those addresses while these will actually refer to the addresses themselves. So since now we're setting pointer 1, since we're setting its addre the address that it's pointing to equal to the address that P2 is pointing to, they're now going to both be pointing to the same address. But this value is never going to be changed. It's still going to be sitting there in memory and, well, I guess if you create it like the way we are, it'll still get deleted once we're done with the function, but if you create it like in your heap or something like that, it's going to stay alive until your entire application is done. So that's a bit more dangerous. So I wouldn't do that. But I wouldn't do this at all. This is not something you would typically do, but this is just for demonstration. So allow me to show you. So this time, let's get rid of these dereference operators, and let's print out P1 and P2 again. So I'll copy this, I'll throw out paste, and the bold should still print out 45 again, but this time, oh, uh, I guess I shouldn't have deleted what I had before. So num1, sorry about this, I have to, don't worry, this is almost done, don't worry. And then you can go on to the next video. The next couple videos, that and dynamic arrays are all pretty much on the same topic. So don't worry. So that's num2. Now let's run this and see the difference. Okay, here we go. So this time, if we look at this, what we did is here, since we set the address that pointer 1 is equal is equal to the address that P pointer 2 is pointing to, uh, they are now both still going to print 45, as you can see here. So it changed from that 15 to 45 for pointer 1. But this time, num1 is still returning as 15. And that's because we're not modifying the value here. So because we're not still pointing there, we're, all we did was changed where the the address that pointer one is pointing to. That's it. So since now it's pointing down here to this this 45, they're now pointing to the same address. So as you can see here, so num one was never changed this time. So that's really really cool. And just so you know, when you do this, all it's doing is changing. All it's changing is the address that pointer one is pointing to the pointers themselves still have their own addresses that were never modified. You, you couldn't modify them unless you use the ampersand, which you're not supposed to do that. So the pointers still do have their own addresses. But um, yeah, so this is about all I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope this uh, tutorial or this whole uh, lesson wasn't too much. It, it is kind of complicated. I'll uh, keep this right here. I uh, this is yeah that's getting cut off so but uh, oh there we go I think that'll all fit for you so so you can see this and this but yeah that's about all I wanted to do for this tutorial uh, I hope hope it was helpful for you and I'll see you next time for dynamic memory allocation